my goodness. <laughs> going to be very dramatic. Jack and I didn't really think about this. I am just a cog in their marketing wheel at this point. We are actually not true to like lenders. Can you imagine the cycle before an IVF transfer? I actually end up getting pregnant naturally. Hello everybody, it is Dingle here and welcome, welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing super, super duper well. I haven't shared a grocery haul in a minute and I just posted it on my Instagram story and people love grocery hauls. I mean, I also love watching what other people get at the store because I feel like it's just so different than what everybody else gets for their family for the week and it also varies because of how many people you have in your family. So this is a grocery haul for two people. This is what we typically do get. So lunch stuff and the breakfast this stuff normally does stay the same. It's the dinner stuff that varies. And I like making a list before going grocery shopping because it just keeps me, it sticks me to a list for the week. And I feel really organized and we know that we will potentially eat most of it, if not all of it. Since it's Sunday, Jack is currently making his way through cleaning the apartment. So we're just doing our Sunday reset. But without further ado, let's get into the grocery haul. Chocolate rice cakes, spinach, romaine lettuce, Ah uh, yes, disgusting chicken boobies. I literally hate touching chicken packaging with my entire existence. 10 chicken boobies are in here. Tomato paste, granola, a little bit of whole milk for a recipe, salted butter, salsa, shredded taco cheese, Parmesan cheese, yogurt, a block of extra sharp cheddar, hot Italian chicken sausage, protein pasta, blueberries, bananas, a red onion, tomato, Tomatoes, a lemon, bell peppers, golden potatoes, cherry tomatoes, cucumber, jalapeno, avocado, a whole bunch of sweet potatoes. Guys, it's going to be very dramatic. The other thing that I got that is not related to food, but a continuation on the search for the perfect journal. And I am not sure that this is the perfect journal yet, but it has made me feel more inspired and better than all the other journals. I looked at and I've been to too many brick and mortar stores and I'm nervous to get one online because I physically have to like feel it, you know, before I like settle on a journal. You're not gonna see this journal coming. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm showing Jack for the first time also. I didn't see a journal coming at all. <laughs> <laughs> look at this journal. I so totally got this. Yeah, wow, but loud. look at it, look at the colors. Isn't it loud? Yeah, it's very loud. <laughs> like you did not see that journal coming. I didn't, and it's not even spiral. I know. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of cool. You guys, okay. At the end of the day, this did not meet any of the criteria that I had wanted. Spiral, aesthetically pleasing, and potentially not even the right size. But I was in Hallmark store, which is right next to Market Basket. She said to not go anywhere else, to come right back home. But I was like, this is an opportunity, and I felt pretty good about it. But all in all, everything thrown out the window, when I picked up this journey, Journal, it's so not something that makes any sense for me like this goes with nothing but it's the way that it made me feel and I was like honestly that feels most important right now when it comes to my journal journey there was a bunch of them so there was things about keeping your heart open and there were things about being strong and like any like messages that you wanted and then this one is the one that spoke to me it says I so totally got this and then on the front it's like it's writing how I think in my mind and I felt very inspired by it. It says, a journal to reassure myself that I am awesome and highly capable and I'm totally gonna nail it no matter what it is and no matter how much I secretly doubt myself because doubt is just a four letter word. Okay, um, maybe five. And I should doubt the doubt, like the nonsense that it is and chant I can do this over and over while seeing myself landing that fabulous job or following the dream that scares me the most because if I believe I can do it or at least convince myself I can try, I've got a better shot at actually killing it like the champ I really am right after which I will start wondering if I'll ever be able to do it again. <laughs> awesome. Isn't that so cool? As somebody who is a serial doubter of themselves, when I read that, I was like, I felt like that is a universal experience, at least for a lot of people, because they wouldn't be selling this journal if it wasn't, you know? Mm -hmm. And what I also liked about it is every single day you go to write 
you can have one side of it to write and on the other side is a quote dedicated to the theme of the journal. So I feel like I'll be inspired every day to see what the next quote is. And then the other thing that I really liked about it is that where you write is actually not a ton of space and the lines are big so I don't feel overwhelmed to write a lot of things so I feel like it is way more likely that I will pick this up and not be intimidated by just a blank slate of sorts but it's not a guided one. Mm -hmm. That's why I think this is the perfect journal. <laughs> I think it's on Amazon so I'll leave it linked down below because I totally looked it up after I left and bought it so that I know that I got like a good price for it and I did. So. I'm so glad you did. Thank you! Bub, don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Journey. This one is even by don't Journey. Stop it's perfect. Believing. We back in the same spot I think a day late. Yeah, it's Monday now. And for a few Mondays in a row a few months ago when Crumble graced us with its presence here in Maine, at least in this area. I don't know if it was in any other location, honestly, in Maine, but Maine's getting cool, you guys. Maine is getting cool. But back when the store opened, we couldn't stop going to Crumble. We would usually get like a single box of cookies, just like one single cookie of like the flavor we really like, but it became a habit. And then I understood their business model so well. I was like, I would never go to a cookie shop this often if they didn't like change up their flavor every week because it has me looking because I'm curious about the flavors every week and I'm like I am just a cog in their marketing wheel at this point so we refrained from buying for a while I don't remember the last time we got a crumble cookie actually but I went on their app today Monday to see what the flavors were and you guys this is our week this is the Mac and Jack week at crumble cookie because if you guys have been following you know my favorite type of cake that's my favorite that type of cake. Hurts. My favorite type of birthday cake, cupcake. It is a fun fetty. Is that just chocolate chip? Yeah, that's just chocolate chip. I had there wasn't a three pack, so I had to get a four pack. I haven't tried any of these cookies besides the chocolate chip, but they had, I have to hold you guys up actually, I do not I do not want a disaster. But for one of their cookies, they had a fun Fetty cookie. So excited. I told you guys I ate some of the, just the regular chocolate chip. Jack took a bite out of the Rocky Road, which is his favorite type. Would you say Rocky Road is your favorite ice cream? Yeah. Yeah, favorite type of ice cream. So that was awesome. And if you guys have been following me for a bit, you know that Reese's peanut butter Butter cups are my favorite candy and that specifically a Reese's peanut butter cup cookie was on the menu this week. Usually there's just one type of cookie where I'm like, that looks really good, but like not good enough for me to go out of my way to pick it up, you know? Especially with Jack, my cook, my baker of a husband who can make me sweets at home. Cause he did, he, last night he actually made me cookies and then we saw these flavors. Okay, taste test. First, the Funfetti cookie. Mm-hmm. Mm, that is fire. Good? It actually tastes like, mmm! That tastes like everything a Funfetti cupcake would be, but in a cookie. Oh, okay. It does, I love Funfetti. Okay, Rocky Road. Jack was not impressed by Rocky Road. Also, Rocky Road is not like my favorite flavor of things. So, so take, that, take that with a grain of salt, you know? I think I needed some of the marshmallow, to be honest. Mmm! Mmm. I like the chocolate cookie. It needs vanilla ice cream. You just like the ice cream yeah. Rocky Road. But that is a good cookie. Don't wrong. That is, I really like that. I like um molten chocolate lava cake. And that reminds me of like a molten chocolate lava cookie. I didn't expect to like that very much. And then, oh, if this lets me down, I'll be like, I might cry. Mmm. Mm. The peanut butter cookie with like mm. Reese's peanut butter. Mm. Oh, that peanut butter on top. I really like that. You have to learn to make me peanut butter cookies, bub. This is the most exciting box of crumble that we've gotten in a while. I shut off the camera and I cut Jack off. He said, okay, but vlog. Guys, <laughs> homemade. Bub, these were so good. I don't want you to think I don't like them. Milk, chocolate, look at that. Look at that crisp. Hold on, you have to show them. Do it look again. Look at the thickness. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh, and it's cooked all the way through. What do you mean about that? Crumble who? Oh, Grumble purposely is like, mm. <laughs> I love those cookies. I love those cookies. I know, she does. I'm just being funny. Delish. 
We're a cookie household. Hello friends. I feel like the vlog that this clip is going into is actually just like a compilation of random life things and like little updates and fun things that we've been doing. But I got a package that I wanted to open with you guys because and Jack is in the other room because it's for him. I think in the opening Christmas presents vlog, you saw that Sam's fiance, my future sister-in-law, Avery, opened a book and it's called and since then, Jack has been so about that book. Like every time we go somewhere, we like check to see if they have it. It's gorgeous. And he keeps asking her to like send him recipes like with pictures of the book. And you guys know by now he just loves baking. He loves cooking. He's just, he's the chef of the household. But the book is like $30 everywhere we go. And rightfully so, it's a gorgeous book, but with everything that we got over Christmas, we got a few different cookbooks, including some bread books and stuff like that. We were like, you know, we just, we do not need this $30 cookie book. So I went on to one of my favorite thrift books store. There's thrift books and aid books. They're all online. And I love going there to just check out the books that they have. They rate their condition, if it's free shipping or not. And I found the book under good condition. There's very good, good, fair, or whatever. I think it's like this one was in the middle. And I think I paid like 14 bucks for it or something total, maybe even less, like maybe $12. And he has no idea that I picked this up, but hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's not too ruined. And then we can give it to him together. Ooh, they packaged it like really securely. It was in that slip and then it's in this situation. <laughs> Saran wrap. It really looks like it came from the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I think it's gonna be good. Oh, it's so perfect. So good condition. I would put this even a little bit higher than good condition, but with a good condition book on these sites, the only downfalls you'll really see are maybe like this corner is a good example where it's just a little bit bent in and then you'll see some detail on the bottom there that's like a little bit bent when it wouldn't be. Look at this. It's perfect. He's going to freaking flip out. The pages are perfect too in this. Like everything is very, very well taken care of. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that cookie on raspberry rye cookie. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Okay, he's on a phone call, but then we can give his book to him. I have a surprise for you. What is my surprise? <laughs> I have a surprise. Is it a new car? Cause I already knew about that one. No, close your eyes. Okay. Keep them closed. Keep them closed and open. Oh my gosh, it's cardboard. Yeah. For Miss Allie. Open it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you give me the 100 cookies book? You didn't have to do that. I did, because oh. you wanted it so bad. Thank you so much. So I can have more cookies. <laughs> That's a good surprise. Oh my gosh, I'm but so guess excited. What? what? It's a hack, because I got it on Aid Books. Did you really? I did, look how, how nice it is. It's so nice. Yeah, I got it for like 12 bucks or something. Oh my gosh. I know, but That's look at it. No toasted sesame cookies. It's perfect. Look at the pages. You guys, this book is awesome. So I've been nagging my sister-in-law. Yes. Avery, hello. Um, and she got this book for Christmas and Mac loves cookies. So yeah. I've been baking Mac cookies from this book via the text that she sends me when I ask for a specific recipe. Yep, and it even comes with the- The bookmark? Bookmark, the pretty bookmark. Oh my gosh. Which is so nice. And it's so legit. Yeah. So I can mark your favorite ones? Yeah. So oh, I'm gonna make you these. Brown, brown butter, butter chocolate, chocolate chip cookies. But these are the chocolate chip cookies I made you. Those are good. Like, guys, it's awesome. The it's cookies are delicious. <laughs> if you want to get into like baking, cookies are awesome. In my humble and very limited experience opinion. From like start to finish, it's like an hour. Like getting the ingredients in the bowl, mixing with it's stuff. Awesome. Yeah, you get your hands wet. So I am very excited. Thanks, Bobby. Did you like it? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's a good prize. Good. You, wanna, you can't add it to there. That's so many books. Oh yeah, you can do that. It's cute, Bob. You're struggling so hard with it. <laughs> Kind of cute. <laughs> Staggered moment. Gorgeous. Oh, and look at the colors we've got going on. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls. Bread, Lost Kitchen, and 100 cookies. Let's go. You guys, we are actually not true New Englanders. Did you know that, bub? Why not? 
because we have never had a snowstorm where we've had to brush off or dig out our car to this degree. And now with our Scooby-Doo, we're gonna have to do that today. <laughs> do we have to dig him out? Not dig him out. I think he'll be fine. The massive brush off moment is something that we have not had to actually do before because we've been so lucky to have some sort of covering every where we've lived. First, we have to get the brushy offy thingy from June. Don't worry, guys. We took June out last night. She still feels loved. And Jack got this massive scraper offer from Market Basket last year. This is monumental. This is a huge moment. That's so much snow. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Are you having so much fun? Yeah, this is huge. Oh, bub, your shoes. No. Look at his little ankles. <laughs> Guys, I am a spoiled, spoiled girl. <laughs> this man just made a little path so that I could climb in the car so that I didn't get too cold. Oh my gosh. You know that he's going to be the dad that like when our kids are 16, they're not going to be brushing off their own car. Like he's going to wake up at the crack ass of dawn before school to brush off and dig their car out if that's what needs to be done. Like he's already just slaying. <laughs> he loves it. Well, hello friends. Jack is currently vacuuming. We're doing our little Sunday reset, but something that I wanted to share, which is, it was just like, I don't know, like weird timing. If you believe in signs or just like how things just so perfectly work out and it's just like kind of freaks you out a little bit or you think it could mean something greater. I don't know. I, I believe in that stuff. I'm a little woo woo in that way. So Jack and I didn't really think about this at the time, but but in between when I got my procedure done, my hysteroscopy polypectomy, hysteroscopic polyp, you know, that thing where they went in and they snipped some things away. Because my clinic wouldn't want to do a transfer in the same cycle as a polypectomy anyway, and we'd still have to wait for insurance to give the final okay ever since we did have the polypectomy, they can be like, yep, you did your thing and you are good to go for your transfer, you're all clear. There was just a number of things that would have prevented us from doing a transfer within the same cycle as the polypectomy. So we knew that, but what we didn't really sink in was that there would be another natural cycle in between the polypectomy and a potential next transfer, which normally I wouldn't necessarily be excited. I feel like women and couples just struggling with infertility might feel the same way. Whenever you have like a break, it's not really a break, you know, you can never really just completely let go after years and years and years of trying to grow your family. So the cycles in between treatment cycles, I have like mixed feelings about them. Part of me is like, that's an opportunity for a break. You know, I can relax, I can let go, but then there's always that little voice in the back of my head that is like, well, you don't want to just pass up this month so that, you know, it means absolutely nothing. Like, why not give it a shot? It could always happen, you know? Like, I never want to just leave a month on the table because it's just such precious time when this is the number one thing that we're chasing right now, you know? But after the polypectomy, my OB let me know that due to the increased risk of infection when it comes to procedures like that, they recommend nothing in that area at all for two weeks. So that includes no tampons or anything of the sort. And so I asked her, I was like, well, if two weeks comes and we happen to be in some sort of like fertile window of sorts, are we good to continue trying after that? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. If that's how it lines up. And then I was like, there's no way that it's going to line up that perfectly. You guys, <laughs> it did. How freaking weird and how freaking lucky are we that even though there was a very specific two week time frame where we wouldn't be able to try it at all, but right at that two week mark, which totally depended on when my cycle started in the first place in December, it was the fertile window. You know what I'm saying? 
very strange, very strange, very, very stars aligny type of strange for me. So I wanted to share those ovulation test strips because I was doing AM and PM like I have found works for me. I really like doing it mid morning, so not the first P of the morning, sorry if this is TMI, but at this point you guys, you know what you signed up for. But I don't like to do it right at the first start of the morning. I like to get water in my system, get a little more hydrated, like I don't want it to be like a false dark, dark line. You know what I'm saying? Plus that's how my clinic liked me tracking them when I was tracking them through sticks anyway. So I just kind of followed that rule as far as the morning goes. And that is usually around 10 a.m. for me. So I usually do one at 10 a.m. and then I do another one at 8 p.m. So I'm getting like two times in the day and by doing that I hopefully can catch my peak at any point of the day you know but what's weird about these lines this month my friends is that I don't think I ever got a peak honestly obviously the control line is closest to my hand I would say the fourth one down is pretty close but then the third from the bottom is also pretty close, but I've gotten higher peaks before. Like I've gotten ones that are either die stealers or like super similar to the control line, but I didn't quite get it and I was doing AM and PM every night during the fertile window. So I do not know, I don't know. But the thing is I did feel all of the physical symptoms that I would feel during ovulation anyway. And throughout all of the treatment cycles where we were tracking everything, there wasn't once that I didn't ovulate according to the blood draws and everything that gets like super specific with that stuff. So I can't imagine that I didn't ovulate. The only thing that I can think of is I felt most of the physical symptoms like most pressure on one of my sides before I even started tracking them. Like I felt some physical pressure and then the next day I started tracking it. So maybe I just ovulated super early, which my body is known to do. That's how we actually had our, what would have been third IUI canceled ultimately because it turns out I ovulated way earlier than expected. So I definitely do that sometimes. But either way, who knows? Who freaking knows? Can you freaking imagine. I know we've been here before. I know we've all been here before on this channel, but can you imagine the cycle before we go in for an IVF transfer? I actually end up getting pregnant naturally. How wild. I hear of those stories all the time and I want that to be me so badly, but it's also like a balance of not getting your hopes up and not reading into perfect timing signs and like stuff like that, but I can't help it. It just, it does get me a little excited. But anyways, my friends, that is going to be it for today's vlog. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, make sure to do so down below because we upload videos here on Wednesdays and Sundays. Everybody do not forget to give this video a big ol' thumbs up. All of my socials are linked down below and I will catch you in the next one my friends. We'll see you later. Bye!